Mr. and Mrs. Umpofu knew that their animals were meant for the Lord. One day, as the couple watched over their livestock, they felt inspired to do more for God. So they gave a portion of their animals as tithe and mission offerings. What moved us as husband and wife to not just give our tithe, but also a bull as offering, is the current GC strategic plan of I Will Go. That challenged us very much because the Bible says, everything belongs to God and we are just His stewards. We're following the scriptures that there's great blessings in giving and that touched our hearts so much because the Lord has been so good to us. Out of the 31 animals they owned, they tithed three cows and gave one bull for the mission offerings. This gesture not only encouraged the visiting church elders who collected the animals, but it caught the attention of neighboring church members as well. Several others have pledged to contribute more to the mission offerings because of Mr. and Mrs. Umpofu's example. The mission offerings make a huge difference around the world and can make the greatest impact when given faithfully and regularly. Mr. and Mrs. Umpofu's country of Zimbabwe is home to Salusa University. Founded in 1894, this Adventist institution educates students from all over Southern Africa. Zimbabwe is part of the Southern Africa Indian Ocean region. This territory is home to more than 4.3 million Adventists. Despite having a well-established history of church growth, there are still many mission struggles here. Your mission offerings help spread a message of hope in some of the most challenging areas, like the growing cities. Please pray for the Southern Africa Indian Ocean region as church members there faithfully follow God's call in their lives. Even if you don't have livestock to give, thank you for supporting the mission offerings. Good morning and welcome to Vallejo Drive Seventh-day Adventist Church Adult Sabbath School Bible Study Online. We're so glad you chose to join us today. Today begins a three-month journey into the book of Genesis. Genesis is the very first book of the Bible, but it lays the foundation for all that's to come in the rest of God's scriptures from the Old Testament or what we often call the Hebrew scriptures and the New Testament. So we're excited to study this together. Why? Because the book of Genesis has God at the very beginning creating the world, creating the universe, creating humankind. And then when we get to chapter 50, the last chapter of Genesis, man is carried away in a coffin. What happened? The book of Genesis is foundational to all of scriptures. And so for us, we're going to look at the origin, our origin of the world, our origin of ourselves, we're going to look at the story of salvation, how God had a plan, even though we as humanity have fallen from that grace and plan He had for us. God has a plan of restoration. It shows us how God relates to people as He talks with them and works on their behalf. So the book of Genesis is a really exciting book that, that is the foundation of all of Scripture itself. So what's interesting about this lesson study is it's actually written by one of my professors that I had at seminary. Dr. Jacques Ducan. And Dr. Ducan was born in France. He actually grew up Jewish. And Dr. Ducan discovered the Messiah was Jesus Christ of the New Testament. He later became a Seventh day Adventist and now is teaching at our seminary. And one of his passions, besides teaching and besides music, one of his passions is helping the Jewish people understand that the Jesus of Scripture is the actual Messiah that was prophesied to come. So his desire is, he's, he has a magazine he sends to Jewish people and shares wonderful things of Scripture and the New Testament about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So I know you're going to be in for a great study as you go through and move through this quarter, the book of Genesis. As we begin today, just to share a couple ideas from Dr. Dukan's uh, lesson study from this past week, I invite you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us this opportunity to come together to study your word and to delve into the first book of the Bible, the foundational book of all of Scripture and for our very lives. 
God, I pray that you'll speak to each one of us personally and powerfully today. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles or just want to listen along, I invite you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. We'll get verses 1 and 2 right now. Actually, verse 1 and 26 right now in this moment. It reads like this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.26 says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, according to our likeness. Here we have the word, the beginning, when God created the world, and then he created us. The word Genesis actually comes from the Greek word Genesis, which is translated as beginning. And in fact, the Hebrew word where it says in the beginning is Bereshit. And this word Bereshit in, in Hebrew means in the beginning, the beginning of all things. Why this is foundational to us? Because it shows us our origin. It shows us the beginnings of this world, of all the life that we see around us and our lives as well. You and I are not cosmic accidents. We didn't just happen to show up because there was some primordial soup that was blended together in a certain way and then out produced life. We are created beings. We are wonderfully created. God chose to bring us into existence. That means He had to have us in mind. He had to be thinking about us. He had to have our, our picture of our, of our face, our personality in His heart. And He created us with purpose. He created us with intentionality. And we are made in His image. That places a great value on us. When we get that God created us with intentionality and purpose, that He wanted us to live in this corner of His universe, we realize how valuable we are to Him, how precious we are. And we start recognizing how precious everyone else is. This past Thursday, I was looking for a, a lampstand for my shade that I have. And I went to Salvation Army, didn't find it. I said, Lord, it'd be awesome if the next place I go, Goodwill has it. Sure enough, I go in the store and there it was, what I was looking for. It fit my needs perfectly for the special lampshade that I have. Well, when I exited, I went out and was turning left into an alley. And I saw a man sitting right there against the wall in the alley. He had his possessions there. He had his bicycle there. And you could tell he had been living on the street for a while. Well, I had happened to have bought food for myself at Ralph's that morning. And so I stopped by, I reached in and grabbed a sandwich, and I said, Sir, are you hungry? Would you like a sandwich? Sure. So he took a sandwich. Then I looked what else I had. I had those wet ones, those wipes. So he goes, would you like some of these? Yes. And I looked inside my console, and I happened to have some Advil, a little packet of Advil tablets. And I asked if he liked these. He goes, oh, yes. And so he took those, and I was about to drive away. And I thought, you know what, let me just ask him, Sir, is there any prayer requests you have? I believe in prayer. Would you like to pray? He goes, yes, um, I'd like to give God praises. Great, what's your name? Lewis, he told me. I told him, my name is Ben. And Lewis told me he wanted to praise God for two things. First, that God made him artistic, the ability to create. And the second thing he said I want to praise God for is that I'm able to communicate clearly and enunciate well. And I said, that's great. That's awesome. Yes, we're made in amazing ways. He goes, yes. And then he took me to Genesis chapter 1, what we're studying this week. And he said, you know what? God made us. And he made us with these gifts. And we can use these gifts. You know, he ministered to me in a special way. Even though I prayed with him right there and then, even though I gave him food and some other items that blessed him, he ministered to my heart to remind me to give God praise and thanks for how God made us. You know, the Bible tells us here in Genesis that we are, we are made in His image and His likeness. That is an awesome thing. That is a blessing. The imprint of God is on us. And as we go through the book of Genesis, we're going to see how that imprint was marred. How when we chose to disobey God and to rather trust in ourselves more than God, how we marred that image, how we hurt that character that he imprinted in us as well, and how he's restoring us to his character. He's restoring us to his image and likeness through healthful living. And we're going to talk more about that in the future. 
But I just share the story with you because even though I drove away in my car and Lewis had a bike, even though I was going to my home that has a roof over my head and the only roof over his head is the sky and the stars, and although I have my worldly possessions here and a wonderful bed to live in and he doesn't, the thing about Genesis and reminding us of the story of creation is that God has made all of us, Lewis and I, you and I, in his image. We are all precious and counted righteous and beautiful and wonderful in God's sight because God made us. And that's how we can relate to one another. There's an interesting insight that Dr. Jacques Ducan brings out here. It's a contrast between chapter 1 of Genesis and chapter 2. In chapter 1, the author, who is Moses, we believe, that was inspired by God, who wrote the first five books of the Bible, including Job, that Moses wrote under inspiration, this, this idea that in Genesis 1, God is Elohim. This word in Elohim is used. When you see the word God, it's Elohim, which means the Almighty God, the great God, the powerful God, the God that transcends or is above us. This God is able to do wondrous things like speak worlds into existence and create things with His hands and, and bring inanimate objects to life. And so here we see that this God is bigger than us in Genesis 1. But when we get to Genesis 2, we see this contrast where here God is not just using the word Moses is not only using the word about God, Elohim, he's using also another word, a covenant word, Lord, Yahweh. And here in this word is, is actually God's covenant name. It's his relationship name. And we actually see that played out when God is there in the dirt, bringing the, the dirt together, the particles, to shape the body of man, and then God breathes life into us. Into, you can imagine how close he is in that moment to the earth, to the dust, to Adam when he's making him. And Adam lives and then God puts him back to sleep and Adam, God takes a rib out of Adam's side and, and then with God's own hands and God's mind, he's shaping Eve the way he wants her to look, the way he wants her to be, and then he presents her to Adam. God is in Genesis chapter 2 shown and portrayed as a God who's in relationship to us. He's close to us. These, this is a multi-dimensional God that we worship. This two-fold picture of God that we have actually shows us that there's more to God than just His power. Or there's more to God than just His personal closeness. God is all these things and more. Now we look at a connection between creation and the Sabbath as we read through the lesson study for this past week. So let's start with Genesis chapter 1, I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, which read like this. And so the heavens and the earth were completed, and all their heavenly lights. By the seventh day, God completed his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because on it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. It's amazing that after all that God did, after he spoke the worlds into existence, as he created man and animals and other things with his hands, after God put all these things in place, he decided to rest. You know, the Bible doesn't tell us that God was sweating on his forebrow. Whew, Man, that was a long week of work. I'm tired. It doesn't tell us that. It tells us that he rested. And the Hebrew word here in rested, Shabbat, is actually to cease. He ceased from his work. He stopped doing that work and he rested. In fact, the last words God uses at the end of creation when he speaks is, and God saw his creation and it said it was very good. God looked back at creation. He took a moment to take it all in. When was the last time you took in what God has made as beautiful? Did you take in a sunset or a sunrise? Did you go for a hike in a park or the mountains and see the beauty of nature around you? Did you take it in? Did you go to the beach and just look and listen to look at the cliffs and the sound of the waves and the smell of the flowers there and the little bunny rabbits that sometimes hide in the brush, especially in a place like Laguna Beach? When was the last time you looked in the mirror? And you took in the creation of you. 
how God made you, how God created you wonderfully and marvelously in His image. Sometimes we look in the mirror and we don't like what we see. It could be physical. It could be what you said to someone the other day. When you look at yourself in the mirror, maybe you're remembering some harsh words you used or maybe you're remembering some pain that you had or a decision you made that, that hurt a lot of people and even, even yourself. But can you look in the mirror with God's hand on your shoulder, His Spirit working in your heart, and can you say to yourself, I am fearfully and wonderfully made, not because I said so, but because God made me. Sabbath reminds us to cease from our striving, to cease from our work for a moment and take it all in, to take in how amazing God is and how amazing He made this world, including you and I. We are part of this world that God made. And to realize He is recreating us every week. He is reshaping our character to, to come into His likeness. He's reshaping us to have the attitudes and the intentions and, and the ideas and the dreams that God wants for us. When was the last time you stood in front of a mirror and thanked God for making you, you? Jacques Ducan has this quote I want to share with you. It says this, it is precisely because God ended His works of creation that He instituted the Sabbath. The seventh-day Sabbath is therefore the expression of our faith that God finished His work then and that He found it very good. To keep the Sabbath is to join with God in the recognition of the value and beauty of His creation. Every time you and I keep or celebrate the Sabbath, and for us, when we follow the Bible's teaching, that's from Friday night sundown to Sabbath, Saturday sundown, we are celebrating with God all His creative works. That's why we keep Sabbath. There's lots of other connections to the Sabbath we're going to discover in the future, but this is huge. We are created, and we get to celebrate that every Sabbath. As God rested from His very good works, so He calls us also to cease and rest from our work. The work that I do that pays me money, I get to rest from that. You get to rest from that. Some people have a hard time talking to their bosses about getting that rest. There are Sabbath keepers in this world who go to their bosses and say, Look, I want to keep the Sabbath because my Lord asked me to. It's my day of worship. Can I have this day off and work the other six days of the week? And some people find that their work or their workplace does not accommodate them. But we're here to tell you we'd be happy to write a letter that you can present to your human resources or to your boss. It's a, it's a letter that we can write and we'll work it with you that will help encourage you and encourage them to consider giving you the Sabbath day that God wants to gift to you and to others as well. Reach out to us through our website at graceunconditional.com for any information. Or you can write any one of us pastors. You just put pastor and then our first name and then at vallejodrive.church. In my case, Pastor Ben at vallejodrive.church. And we'd love to help you write that letter for Sabbath keeping. But the Sabbath reminds us that, yes, God made this world, even though there's war right now and there's tension and there's anger and there's slaps that are happening and so many things that are going on in this world that causes pain and hurt and, anxious and anxiousness and consternation. But God's Sabbath reminds us God created every good thing in this world and He's making every wrong thing right and He will in His time and eventually will come back to make it all right in human history. So there's so much more we could say about this week's lesson. There's more I didn't get to, but I invite you to look back on it, even if you haven't seen it, to read it this weekend for yourself or this week and catch up and start reading for lesson two this coming week. If you read just a, each little part of the lesson every day, you're going to see how much you're going to grow in the understanding the book of Genesis and how God's going to use those words to speak to your heart and use the Holy Spirit in your life. And I invite you to join us on this amazing journey of going through the book of, of, of Genesis so that we can understand every book of the Bible, even the last one that we're studying in our worship service at 11 o'clock, Revelation. So if you haven't joined us yet in our worship service, you can find us on Facebook, you can find us on YouTube, and we'd love to have you join us for worship in person as well. And whether you decide to wear a mask or not, we have decided to follow the county's 
guidelines and lifting the mandate. We have no mandate in our church right now. If you want to feel safer and wear a mask, feel free to do so. If you don't want to wear a mask, uh, you're, you're free to do that as well. We just ask you to social distance as much as possible. But we are so blessed to join you on this journey of Genesis. And this is an exciting book. There's, there's a, as we say in Spanish, a telenovela. There's a there's some uh, soap opera in the book as well. There's, there's many backdrops that are there in our humanity that God reveals His grace to us in the book of Genesis. So please join us in studying the book. Let me have a word of blessing for you right now as we go about our week. God, thank you that we can unpack a little bit of your beauty in this book, of your intentionality in creating us, of Lord of your Sabbath that reminds us to stop and take in your creation to enjoy the beauty of it and the wonderful value you placed on us, on ourselves. So Lord, I pray for those listening to this program and also being part of it that Lord, whatever they're going through, help them to see the value and beauty that you gave them by creating them. Help them to see the value and beauty in nature around them. And Lord Jesus, thank you that we get to journey with you into eternity step by step, day by day, until you come to take us home. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed Sabbath day. We'll see you next week. The History of Creation In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. Then God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind. And it was so. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Then God said, Let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man 
in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made.